Hey friends, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. Welcome to Meat Cove. Welcome back friends. So yeah, I've been looking forward to this one. And to be honest, as far as a boondocking spot or a camping spot, this one is gonna be pretty hard to beat.
Welcome back, friends. So it seems the McClellan family who own the Meat Cove campground, they're a little camera shy. So I'm going to do my best to tell you about their campground without missing anything or messing anything up. So here we go. So the family themselves have lived and fished in this area for eight generations. The campground's owned by Kenneth and his son-in-law, Justin, is more or less the caretaker. And he's been running around on a quad, fixing things, building things. He's a very busy guy right now. Um, June, I guess, is the shoulder season, so to speak. They open the campground June 1st. There has been some people come through, but it's been a little quiet. Um, I'm not sure if that's just pandemic or if it's kind of usually a little quiet, but things pick up by July and their full on season is July, August, September, and into October. Now, the campground itself has 30 tent sites and six rustic cabins. Now I say rustic because the cabins themselves have two beds with mattresses, two chairs and a table, and anything else you need, you're basically gonna be bringing it. You wanna bring your own bedding, your own food. If you wanna cook, bring a cook stove, that kind of thing. Now the tent sites are first come first serve. The cabins can be reserved. So if you wanna reserve a cabin, go on the website, call a number, they'll be happy to help you out. Now that said, out of the 30 tent sites, Two or three, maybe, are going to fit in an RV. Now, obviously, the tent sites are first come, first serve. So if you're driving up in an RV, you're definitely going to want to phone ahead first. Make sure they got space for you and make sure that they know that you're in an RV so that they can gauge whether they have that one of those spaces for you. Obviously, I fit the 25 and a half foot trailer in there. So, you know, there is space for a few RVs. Now, keep in mind these sites are non-serviced. There's no hookups there. They're, you're dry camping, you know? So if you're not used to dry camping, if you're used to an RV park, keep that in mind. You better have some fresh water on board. You better have your batteries charged and you better be willing to, you know, go without sewer and water and electricity because you're not plugging in anything. Now, that said, they have a water station. You can get fresh water, drinking water. In addition to that, they have free Wi-Fi and free hot showers. There's washrooms with two toilets and two showers in each side. And in the busy season, there's pit toilets that they also open up. Those are currently closed because the washrooms are open. Aside from the accommodations, what's there to do here? Well, you have Meat Cove Beach. It's a public beach. Anybody can come, drive down a little road, park down there. There's also kayak rentals. You can rent a single or a tandem kayak by the hour. Um, I'm not gonna quote prices right now just cause you know, you might be watching this at a different time and they might be wrong. So uh, best to check out the website or phone and talk to one of the girls or Justin and they'd be happy to let you know what their current rates are. Uh, why would you wanna rent a kayak? Well, you can't see it, but um, I'm looking at a waterfall right over there. So you could get in the kayak, pack a little lunch, Scoot over to the waterfall, hang out. There's one thing you can do. Uh, over on this side, there's a natural arch that uh, comes down into the water with a hole in it. You can go through there. And um, yeah, why not? Aside from kayaking, there's a couple of hiking trails. There's the mountain trail, which is up this way. I think it's 3.7 kilometers. Uh, depending on how much of a hiker you are. I'm not sure how long that's going to take you. Uh, apparently the view is pretty spectacular, but it is a pretty steep hike. The other hike is the Meat Cove Overlook hike, or as Justin calls it, the Grassy Knoll hike. And it's over here. It's fairly short. I think uh, Rollins and I did it in about 15 minutes. I'm a little out of shape. You could probably do it in less, uh, but that's to the peak. And then if you go down kind of closer to the water from the peak, you do have to keep in mind, you have to come back up and uh, it's pretty steep. So basically to wrap it up, you have the beach, you have kayaks and you have hikes. Now, if you get hungry, you can also check out the Chowder Hut restaurant. So the Chowder Hut obviously has chowder. They have mussels, cold beer, that kind of thing. Uh, they open July 1st through to October and their closing date is kind of fluid depending on traffic and the weather and how busy the campground is. So keep that in mind. Might not be open in October when you come up. 
but be warned for 2021 because they're just coming out of the third wave of the pandemic things are just opening up now they don't expect it to be as busy as usual so the chatter hut will not be open for 2021 so if you're watching this early 2021 keep that in mind chatter hut's not open so the only other thing i can think of that i should tell you guys is if you're driving in the road coming in as you get closer gets a little rough uh, it's very windy and there's some potholes and zips and that kind of thing it goes from rough pavement to smoother gravel to rough pavement to smoother gravel um, if you're in a big rig rv or that kind of thing you're going to want to take it slow um, just be warned i mean i didn't find any issues with it we just slowed down and you know took it slow and it's no different than some of the other places i've been where you just kind of you know take your time aside from that if you're looking for any other information uh, i'll put a link to the website in the description if you want to make a reservation for the cabins the number is on there there's tons of information tons of reviews on both the chowder hut and the campground uh, if my footage of this area doesn't sell you on it um, i don't know what's going to it's beautiful as far as campgrounds for me go, it's pretty much set the bar. I don't know if I'm going to find a better spot than this one. If you're a tent camper and you're coming up here, you might want to see if site 11 is open. That's this one right here. It's out on the little outcrop in the middle of everything. The beach is right there. The rocks are right there. The grassy knolls up there. Yeah, this is like the coolest spot. Now, obviously, if you're getting wind, you might not want to be right here. But if you're hungered down and it's beautiful in summertime, yeah it's pretty amazing i mean i'm out there and i love it so so today rollins and i took a little hike not a long hike i'm not in shape for the long hikes yet or maybe i never was i don't really know but anyways i was talking to justin from the meat cove campground and he was telling me about this little hike it was about 20 minutes in maybe 15 20 minutes to get in so it wasn't that bad a little bit of an incline coming in and then it's going to be a little bit of an incline going out because we came all the way down to the edge here Rollins and I but um, basically he calls it the grassy knoll hike and what it does is it brings you through the forest up and then back down this slope here that's all basically just kind of grasses and a little bit of heather I think this is down here and um you know some rock outcroppings etc but it brings you out to this point it's beautiful flew the drone out um, followed a fishing boat for a little bit so basically um, yeah if you're ever at Meat Cove campground talk to Justin and say where do I find the grassy knoll hike it will bring you in and up and over and you can be standing here at the edge of the ocean just like I am but yeah it's beautiful not a hard hike there's a couple little you know you have to duck under a log here and there but overall it's pretty easy anybody that's done any kind of hiking is not gonna have a problem that said yeah beautiful view it's quiet imagine there's a few more people here in the middle of summer but uh since i'm talking to you guys i decided i would also update you on a couple other things so meat cove where did it get its name I thought it might be cra something crazy, like, um, you know, my buddy Ian mentioned that uh, maybe it was the same guy that named Dildo Newfoundland, but no, it's not as, a, as exciting as that. It's basically back in the day, sailors would come through and if they needed to stay overnight or whatever, they would pull into the cove and they could go hunting because it's a forested area and collect a moose or an elk or something i don't really know what's vibrant around here but you know as far as animals go but you know they come in do a little hunting maybe catch a moose take it on the ship and they'd be good for weeks you know they'd have meat for weeks plus the fishing um i've seen fishing boats they come in early apparently lobster so all that stuff is here and they basically just figured you know it's a good place to get meat so it's meat cove so yeah, nothing exciting, nothing crazy. Just meat cove. We can get meat there. Bada boom.
Well, friends, I don't think there's much more I can tell you about this place. If the footage and the images didn't convince you that this is a place you want to come and check out, you might want to check your pulse. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. If you haven't yet clicked the subscribe button, please do, because there's more Nova Scotia stuff coming soon. And I'll talk to you all soon.